Hello, good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today we are talking about the Pan-Asian Cruiser event going on right now in World of Warships. So, I think I didn't really process fully what was said in the patch notes when I went over that a few videos ago, and unfortunately Wargaming has gone back on some favorable decisions they've made for the previous two early access events. And, well, let's walk you through it. So, for the duration of this patch and the next patch, the Pan-Asian Cruisers are in early access. Now, do keep in mind, during the entirety of this video, these are not premium ships, these are not special ships, these are techline ships that, in two patches, roughly ten weeks from, well, patch day, these are going to be fully free for everyone to research, regardless of whatever. At the end of the day, these are ships you get for free, just by playing the game, earning XP, and earning credits, and trading that in for these ships. Alright, so, in order to get most of these ships in this event, they have gone with the sequential bundles. Now, the sequential bundles can be obtained via the Pan-Asian tokens, or whatever they're calling them, this, this go-round. Each package cost a little bit more than the prior bundle in the sequential list and you have to go in order to get them fine makes sense how do you get these tokens well there's two main ways to get these tokens you can just play the game and you will be rewarded with pet agent tokens as you complete a series of combat missions and the combat missions are not entirely hard. Some of the later ones, it looks like, during uh, the event, as some of these are are locked until you either complete the prior section, or they might be time-locked, but it looks like you just got to complete the section for now. Then they open up some more later on. You just complete certain directives, such as get 10 torpedo hits or defense ribbons. Cost 22,000 HP of damage to ships by setting fires of flooding, so forth and so on. Most of these combat missions will reward you with tokens. Some reward you with some other bonuses like signal flags and the like. And through this, you get these tokens. And also you can unlock, uh, in the last one, you get the Chumfong, which is the Tier 7 Techline Pan-Asian Cruiser. Alright, very good. Just by playing the game and completing combat missions, you get these tokens and are able to access these these ships that are in early access. Now, the other way you can get these tokens and get a lot more this way is, of course, you buy the random bundles. Not unlike a previous early access event. And in these random bundles, you have various bundles that come with a combination of Pan-Asian tokens, uh, special signal flags some camouflages and such, but Wargaming has gone and put the Tier 9 Pan-Asian light cruiser, the, Xi the Xizhong, in these random bundles as well. Now, if you remember from a few early access events ago when they put the Johan de Witt in the random bundles for the early access to the Dutch cruisers, that was a bit of a mess because... More players than not, it seemed, were having to go to the very last bundle in order to get the Johan de Witt. This go-round, even with myself being a World of Warships YouTuber, um, I, I decided not to splurge on this event because I, I'm kind of sick of these events and I really don't want to encourage these by handing over up to 60,000 doubloons. And yes, you heard that right. There are 60 bundles. They cost a 1,000 dubs each and... You can pay up to 60,000 doubloons trying to get a Techline Tier 9 ship that will not have any type of economical benefits at all. So, yeah. Now, if that wasn't it, there's a little bit more. The Jinan, the Tier 10 Techline Pan Asian Cruiser, is also available in these early access event. It is available for 20,000 doubloons once you get done with all the sequential bundles. So you have to grind for the ability to throw 20,000 doubloons at the screen to get the Janan. Now honestly, if it was just the sequential bundles and then 
20,000 dubs for the Janan, I really wouldn't be that upset about this. Why? Well, because you know what you're getting. And really, I'm not that upset about that part either. It is a bit of a high high price to get the Janan just a little bit early, but hey, you know what you're getting, you know what you have to go through to get it. If you want to pay that much to get the ship early before it comes out, and you understand that this is a tech line ship that you will be able to get for free in two months' time, and you just want it right now, and it's your money, you do what you want with it, I'm completely fine with that. I'm not fine with them putting the Tier 9 back in the random bundles. I mean, this is right back to, well, not right back to where we started from beforehand. Other stuff has still been improved, such as communication and uh, some other things. And they did ask me if I was 18 before I, I bought the few bundles that I did to see if I would get lucky and get the uh, Tier 9 in the first 10 or so bundles here. Um, so, I mean, hey, they, 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 they do that now at least. But, yeah, this is just backtracking on all that progress made with these early access events like the last two were so good you just played the game to get these ships in early access um now they did they did auction off the schlieffen early access to the schlieffen and um I, i'm pretty sure they made just buckets of cash on that because we saw i think the highest schlieffen went for like thirty four thousand blooms which is freaking nutty for a tech line ship and now that person that spent 34,000 to blooms on early access to that schlieffen just has a, a of course a normal schlieffen like everyone else has right now um but again hey it's your money if you want to throw a couple hundred dollars at the game sure fine i understand you know it's a company and they need to make money and yeah that's why i'm okay with having to pay 20,000 to blooms for early access to the janan after you get done with the sequential bundles i'm okay with that i'm that's the big thing with me and my opinion on mechanics like this. If you know what you're getting, and you know how much you have to pay to get it, and you know what you have to go through to get it, that's fine. But this gambling with the with the uh, random bundles to where it could be in the next one. Oh, it could be in the next one. Oh, it could be in the next one. Oh, you just, just a little bit more, just a little bit more. Like, I, no, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. And again, it is Wargaming's game. They can do whatever they want with it. But as someone who likes to share their opinion on the game and who loves the game and hates seeing more and more of these mechanics being introduced into the game after we just had the whole kerfuffle trying to get as many of these me mechanics out of the game as possible i don't like it i do not like it at all do not like it one bit so again if you're out here playing with warships for these two patches just don't mess with the random bundles at all just play the game get the ships you can get for the pan asian tokens by just doing the combat missions and get those ships enjoy those ships and you can get the tier 10 if you want to if you finish grinding up through all the directives and stuff it's gonna be a while it's gonna take two months because they love to stretch the, and that's another thing too they stretch these early access events out for two months like i would understand if let's say they um you know they 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 they've got the tier f uh four to the or the tier three to the tier nine done, and they want to release those, but they still have to balance the tier ten or the the tier four to the tier eight, whatever. That's what we were told in the past that like the the higher tier ones they they spend more time balancing those because of course that's where, that's where most uh, players play. That's where a lot of competitive um, matches like cots and clan battles are played at. So they want those ships to be ideally as close to perfect as they can upon their release, although recent track records show that the that doesn't happen all the time and then they hold those back and then they release those when they're done and that's only been for like one patch with these with the earlier early access events but now they're stretching them out for two whole patches where we have the whole lines done now so i get you no know, maybe a patch of early access but really 10 weeks of early access when they're when they're flaunting these ships in front of your face wanting you to spend money on the random bundles so you can get the the tier 9 that you can get completely for free in 10 weeks but yeah guys just avoid the random bundles just get the ships you can get through the through the combat missions and through the pan asian tokens and you, you'll be able to get these ships completely for free in 10 weeks i wouldn't spend a dime on this early access event if i was you guys like none at all anyway guys just want to talk about that let me know what you guys think about the Pan-Asian Cruiser early access event in the comments down below. 
Hope you're all having a wonderful Friday. I will be live streaming right here on the channel from 5 p.m. U.S. Central Time to 8 p.m. U.S. Central Time tonight. So please come check us out there on Twitch and on YouTube. Hope you're all having a wonderful Friday. Have a wonderful weekend. And hope to catch you guys in the next one.